I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it looks something like this. Hello and welcome back to the fourth chapter where we are building the logic behind the rail system. In this clip, we continue with the points that already know which point is able to place what later down the road. We also have created initial support values. Now we need to prepare the main processing. For that, we start a new block for a clean overview on this section. We start with the mentioned points that already carry some information. And again, we should look at each segment by itself. That means we can copy the loop block and its wrangle to pick just one segment at a time. Paste in these nodes and of course, this time we don't need the part for the end and the start. We just want to look at each segment by itself. And that still works as it should. To have a better idea of what we have to do now, I template the terrain node since this is what manipulates the already existing data. So let's focus on this first segment. Somehow we need to go through the points of this segment, mark them for an object like a tower, set its support, distribute that support, and then continue the process with the new data. So we need another loop, but which one? In theory, we need to do enough iterations to go through each point that has no support yet. Since we don't really know yet how many that might be, we need to start with the worst case scenario. So let's say we need to be able to visit each point. And your immediate idea might be a for each point loop. And that would work if we would also change some of these settings. But to clarify that, let me do a quick excursion to how these sub loops work. Here we have a simple polygon sphere. Its frequency is set to 2 which gives it 42 points. I also throw in a new point attribute called test, which allows us to do some fun testing with the point numbers. Now, what does the default for each point loop do? Apparently, it deletes the polygons. But why? That's where the individual settings on the block begin and block end come into play. The default point loop fetches by piece or point. That means it takes each single point by itself, looks at it, and then uses its gather method to decide how to combine it again. With the point preset, that's merge each iteration. So it gathers the result of each iteration and puts it back together. But since it only looks at the point, the other information, like which points form a polygon, is lost. Now let's make this a bit more clear by adding this wrangle into the mix. It just prints hello point number and then adds the point number to the test attribute. Notice that I add the point number and not just set the attribute to the point number. You see why that's important shortly. Currently, the wrangle always just deals with one single point at a time. So each of them will have the point number zero. So what else could we do? We could change the gather method to feedback, basically saying, show me what the last result is. The wrangle still goes through all the points by themselves, but the result of the loop will only show us its last iteration. In this scenario, that's the last point the loop visits. Now let's change how the loop begins. Rather than picking each point by itself, we could decide to fetch the whole input that goes into the loop. That means we don't split our sphere into points, but keep the whole sphere intact and let the loop do its thing with all of it. You can immediately see that this will also keep the polygons, since we again just push the geometry through as it is. This also means that the points also keep their original point numbers, which we can now see in the printed console and if we highlight the wrangle, also in the attribute seen in the spreadsheet. And finally, this leads us to feedback, which we will also need in the rail. As soon as I switch the method, you can see how the console seems to go wild. We still print out the point number for each point, but we go through all points a lot of times. 42 times to be specific. As I said, I add the point number to the test attribute. When you take a look at the spreadsheet, you can see how that was done again and again. 
while the attribute kept the values it was getting in the previous iteration. The gather method is still feedback each iteration, so we currently see the last result. When we turn this back to merging, each result is added on top of each other. And we can see all 42 points times 42, because the iteration method is still by piece or point. So back in the rail project, what I want to do in my loop is to do something with the data on the points. And whatever I do should be available to the next loop. So what I do need is, as I said, the feedback loop. This loop does not go by point, but by count. And I can use that since I do know what point count my individual segments have. The wrangle called the segment made sure that I'm only left with points of one specific segment. That means I can find my segment length on whatever point is currently point zero. If the segment exists, it has at least one point. And I don't need to know how many by asking for the first one. So the inner loop is getting one segment and does as many iterations as there are points while each iteration looks at the feedback of the last iteration. Keep in mind that instead of count, we could have used the point method as well. The outer loop is making sure that we do visit each segment and it merges the work it does on each one back together in the end. In that inner loop, we will do the main work with a wrangle that will determine the needed strength according to a rule set that we will define here. Whatever comes out of here is the final result of chapter 4, the points with the support and strength information. What I want to find here are the points that should get a strength value representing one of the different options. In a construct like this, I almost always set the wrangle to detail, which means I have a piece of code that is executed only once. Obviously, we will not set up all of that during the rest of this clip, but we will create the basic structure. The stuff I need to do here is a bit more complex, which means it will result in a big chunk of code. And nobody likes a big chunk of code, except maybe me. But this is a perfect situation to use custom functions to organize the logic in modules and make it easier to come back to it later and understand what the hell you were doing before. So all the functions will go here. And then we have the main code that is calling these functions. Here we start by defining the different strength levels. Again, I have three levels of towers and one bridge. Whatever you come up with, this is the place to add them. I use integer channels here that will later be connected to my control node. Now at this point, we need to actually start thinking about how we solve the problem on the lower level. I need to keep track which options are not only available, but also plausible after applying my rule set. I also need to know where I would place that option when I investigate a specific point. I decided to use arrays to save that information. One for the available options and one for the appropriate point for that option. Don't worry, you don't need to come up with something like this on the spot. The fact that I know to define these arrays right here is the result of experiments, trial and error. Let's take a look at what steps we need to make. First, we need a global loop where everything is happening in. This loop will look at the individual points but it will not do its thing with every point. The overall idea is that a point with support does not need to play something new. So we look out for points without any support. Then we check the available options and where they would be placed to cover this one point with support. Because I just found a point without support, it doesn't mean that I want to place something right here. The point before this, probably did have support, so whatever is placed should be placed further ahead of the rail. Then, once I know that, I can bring in some more dynamics, for example by using weights to influence which choice gets used more often. This process will cover a lot of cases, but there might be some where this will result without an option, even though I still have points without support. So I need a plan B for those. Finally, if I found my option for this iteration, I need to apply the strength and support attribute according to the picked option. 
At the same time, I need to distribute the support so that the next iteration has the correct data at hand. If I find a suitable option, I need to make sure that I cancel the rest of the loop once I distributed the support. I need the loop to start from the beginning using the latest feedback. I could save myself a few iterations by remembering where this iteration stopped. The next point without support can only be in front of this one, but I chose to ignore that potential performance gain. The segments of my scene maybe have 100 points. Going through some unnecessary loop iterations just to read the support attribute and notice that indeed there is already some support, that's not really an issue. But if you would scale up the scene, use a lot more points, this might be something you need to address. So the loop itself is very simple and just what you might expect. We just do a loop over all points available. With the counter variable i, we can now read the support attribute that the points have right now. And once we find one that has no support, we jump into the main logic. For this clip, we just want to do something to test if we indeed reach all points. Every point we encounter that has no support now has a support value of 1 and also gets a strength attribute set to 1. Basically, let's place level 1 towers everywhere and they only grant one support. Not very helpful, but we can see if we indeed reach every point and that this framework allows us to do what we need. And that does look promising. All points have support, while the points that already had some from the border or a tunnel were ignored. We can see that since those do not have a strength value. That's what we want to create with the real logic as well. Have at least one support on each point, but find the best positions to place the towers and bridges to prohibit overlapping. All the while we allow weighted control over what option we want to see more often. But I will cover all of that in the next and final clip of this chapter. Hopefully I can keep that short and interesting. I seriously doubt that. But even if it will be a long and boring coding video, you better come back and watch it.